What's up everyone, it's State of Soccer. We are back for another football tour. And today we're getting a little slice of paradise. I think you know what I'm talking about. Today we are in Glasgow, Scotland, home of the one and only Celtic Football Club. Let's do it. When it comes to Celtic Park, there is so much history at this ground. Let's capture some of that history with a quick walk around outside and then we'll make our way in to start the tour. There are four main statues outside of Celtic Park. The first is of legendary Celtic player and coach Jock Steen. Next to Jock is Jimmy Johnston, who many Celtic supporters believe is their greatest ever player. The third statue is of Brother Walfred, the Irish priest who founded Celtic Football Club back in 1887. And the final statue is of Billy McNeil, also known as Celtic's greatest ever captain, hoisting the 1967 European Cup final trophy where Celtic defeated Inter Milan. I like trophies in the cabinet, folks. I really do. It makes my job very easy, let's be honest. We're now the champions of Scotland for the 52nd time. And we've done it because of great players, but the great players needed somebody to pick them in the first place. And that guy was Ange Postacoglu. He has been an incredible manager here. He really has. And we're now the champions of Scotland for the 52nd time. Um, we have, we have anything but dull to watch. Honestly, I've been cracking a few jokes about this, about me only being 25. Um, this is what watching Celtic can do to you, because we've had a few last minute winners last season. I've looked back, this is nothing new. Jock Steen's team did that as well. Billy McNeil's team in a centenary year in 1988, it, it, you know, they played right to the very end. Some real dramatic last minute winners. His team are exactly the same, but they are relentless, high press, and fantastic to watch, they really are. Outside of Celtic's 52 Scottish League Championships, the boys in green have won the Scottish Cup 40 times, the Scottish League Cup 20 times, and of course, a European Cup title in 1967, becoming the first British club to be crowned European champions. International Cameron Carter Vickers. We've got him on loan for a year from Spurs and we've now got him on a four year contract. And he's not even the tallest person, he's not much taller than me, but he's got some spring in his legs and he is built like a bridge. Eddie's <laughs> He's a big laddie, he really is. Sunday. It looks fantastic. That's the UEFA hybrid and it's 3% artificial and 97% real grass. And the artificial grass is very deep planted by machine and they use almost like a knitting machine to draw it together and the strands from the real grass grow around the artificial grass. And then there's gravel, then the earth, then the, 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 the grass. a plaque on the wall at Janefield Street. The plaque is next to a graveyard. The graveyard is called East Necropolis and our old stadium was next to that graveyard. That plaque commemorates the site of the original Celtic Park. We were there from 1888 to 1892 and we fell out the landlord for over money. So the club bought all this land. The new stand, that was the main stand over there actually, and it was a bigger, better stadium, a running and cycling track around it. The volunteers built the first stadium, they helped to build this bigger, better stadium here. But a lovely expression from back then stands the test of time, folks, because a journalist said when Celtic moved from the old stadium to the new one, we moved from the graveyard over there to paradise here. So 
So that does it for this episode of State of Soccer. Make sure to hit like, subscribe if you enjoyed today's tour of Celtic Park. We'll see you in the next one from somewhere else, either far or close. Who knows? Subscribe to find out.